Hello, this is Max Drake from Windy Wellington. I'd like to talk about this Glide app development that I'm looking at, which is a reservation schedule. This is based on something which I saw very early on. I saw David Siegel's um, video on booking a meeting room, which was using the switch com um, component. Um, and that was just, you know, it's, it's, it's either reserved or it's, 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 sorry, it's occupied or it's not occupied. So it was quite limited from the point of view of you would actually want to put that out to uh, either more times in the day or through the next week and things like that. So I thought, oh, there's an idea of a, 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 an app that could be developed. And then I thought, well, why wouldn't you just use calendars? And you would just use calendars if you had a few meeting rooms and you'd just book your times ahead and just block that out. But, um, so that was where that came from. Then I actually got somebody emailed me about a restaurant reservation. They were having trouble getting an app developed and they'd seen one of my videos. I think it must have been the timesheet one with calendars. And they asked me for a little bit of help. I wasn't that confident at the time. So I said, well, why don't you actually put something up on the Glide community? So he put a note up on the Glide community and uh, with a bit more details. And I said, put details in there just so that people have some reference. Anyway, I carried on thinking about it. I thought it was a little bit of a challenge and I've been thinking about some things. And uh, and so I looked at a workflow. Um, the chap never got back to me. So I was a bit disappointed with that. But um, uh I decided to go through with it anyway. I thought I'd share the workflow with people. As a reservation app, it's quite a cool thing to have. It's useful. So the idea with the app is that somebody rings up and says, I want a reservation. And so they say, first of all, what date? So you look up a date and here's a date. And then they look at time, eight o'clock or something like that. And you can see that there's tables free. So you can say, yes, that reservation's fine. And then you say, can I have your details? So you then have to go. So first of all, you confirmed that you have free so that they can make a reservation, that you're not overbooking something. And so you can choose a table and then you can go to the second tab and go make a new reservation. And the date is on the 9th and the start time is 8 p.m. And the number of people who are coming along are five. And the name is George and the number is flat one, two, three. And the table is, I think I said table six. You could elaborate here a bit by actually having the person who made that reservation as a pull down part. Um, and there's a few other things. Now I've tried to use as many choices as possible to simplify inputting. So you can input the data really quickly. The other comment that I'd like to make on this, and then you've just got to go add, and then it comes through. So that will come through into the reservation sheet through here. So there it pops through. Um, uh, this comes through. It's actually comes through. I've split off the input or input from uh, Glide app onto one sheet. I then have another sheet here of where do you store that information. Um, and to me, uh, since it's t um, date and time stuff, the best place is a calendar. So I'm actually just going to push this stuff. And I've got a little script here. I've got a couple of scripts for this. Sorry, I'm, where's my scripts? I haven't got my scripts up there. Um, I've got a couple of scripts, and oh, let's just fire those up. Um, one which pushes events. So it just grabs all of those events and pushes them into the calendar. Ah, oh, something's happened on that one. Ah, oh, switch your face, who cares? And um, see, this isn't refreshing or something. Oh, no, I'm sure I've had other ones in there. Um, Oh, there's a ninth. Um, so it pushes it into the calendar, and that's a good place to store it. So in some ways, I can actually blow this data away now. I don't need it anymore because it's actually gone into, and I'm using the calendar as a database. I could use the sheets as a database, but suddenly I'm going to end up filling these sheets up quite a lot. And since this is a sharing element with Glide, I want it to be fast. So I don't want to bed it down with a whole lot of data in here. I want it reasonably clean. So anyway, I push the information into there. So the other thing that I could do is start pulling out information from there. So I only need to pull out the information that I need, I want to pull out in a way. So my second script coming through here is actually pull out everything, get events 
from the 1st of the 6th to the 30th of the 6th, so all of June. Just give me any of the information to do with that because I could have reservations being booked out two or three months in advance, special day for Mother's Day or something like that. So those ones go in there, but I only actually want to see a small amount. So we're using the calendar as a database, so that's doing the, 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 the carrying of storing all our information. And then I pull out what I need to do. So I actually have this import sheet. So if I just blow this data here away, um, and just run that um, script in there, get events through, it's going to go through and find any events that I've actually got through that particular time. Um, uh, and there's a, it's a little bit buggy at the moment, but I don't really mind. So it's brought them through to there. Then once I've got, again, I just want to show you the choices. So I've got all the numbers of the tables, I've got the dates, I've got the start times, and I've even got the numbers of people, just because it's minimising the amount of typing that you need to do. And again, if I have the person who's actually taken that booking, I'd give their names through there and put that one through. Because again, it's quick. It just It's a, it's a great little tool. But anyway, we come across and I'm using charts. Now, he asked, kind of said, well, how can I display that? And you're suddenly thinking, how can I display charts through there? And when I was actually setting up a matrix, I suddenly thought this is the ideal method that you actually want to do things. You want a row and you want the table. So you want to see across a row if something's being used or not. And this one here... Uh, I've just done in these ones here I've just done conditional formatting so it basically says if it's empty don't do anything if there's anything in there put a colour in there so it puts the colour in there so you can quickly visually see which tables are booked and which ones aren't at a specific time in, in thing. Well, so that's really nice so first thing I've done is I've grabbed that import data and I put it into here so this is just an, an array form has just imported all that data through into here now in here, what I need to do is I need to compare, first of all, this date with this date. Have I got a date that pertains to here? Then has it, has it, um, I've got to compare in here this table with the table along here. So first I find the date, then I find the table or I find the time and then I find the thing. So I've got to do three compares. Now I was getting driven nuts by this, trying to do a V lookup within a V lookup within a V lookup. And I wasn't even getting two V lookups, one nested V lookup inside another one working even. I was getting all sorts of weird results. And I tried V lookups and match and index as well and all sorts of things and I just wasn't doing it. And then I found an article somewhere which actually said where you've got multiple V lookups. And what you really need to do is simple. You just concatenate these three things and you make one element. And then you compare that element with that element. Because, and then straight away, all I need to do is just check this cell here against this row here. Oh, sorry, column here. And straight away it does it. Now it's got this if error because if it isn't, I've tried to put just an empty cell. But if I don't have this if error, what it shows is not applicable, which looks very ugly. So you've got not N A N A N A N A N A N A, and then one bit of text, which looks very confusing. So I actually had to look that up. And then also you see this chart; it's pushing quite a it's quite a way out because I've got two things in here. I wonder if it changes if I do one. Um, I just make that. Um, oh, sorry, I've got to do, got to do the one there. So I can just stretch that down there and then that should update. So it comes straight to T. It's still that wide. I wonder if that cell needs... I'm just trying to see if I can format my uh, table through here. Anyway, so once I've got the data coming through here, so that's doing a VLOOKUP. I've only actually done that column. I need to elaborate it through onto here and then elaborate through the days. At the moment, these are fixed days. So it's looking up date. First of all, it's then looking up um, the time and it's looking at the table. So I need to spread all of that information right across there. Then it's also fixing all these dates down here. Now these are fixed dates, but I think what I really need to do is the next part, the next iteration of this concept is to then go through with an iteration of putting today. So you put today's date, then you put tomorrow's date, which is today plus one, and this is today plus two, and the, down as far as you need to go. I'm just doing three. Now, then I've actually just made a chart, so I've actually just selected that data within there, and I've just gone through and made myself a chart. Now, I've then just suddenly said, that's chart number one, that's chart number two, that's chart number three, and if I, um, and then all I've got is on my front sheet, 
I've just got those links to those charts um, through there. So that's the way that I'm actually doing that workflow. A couple of things with this chart. First of all, with this chart, if we actually go and look at the chart, um, if we look at the chart types, there wasn't that many charts. There's only one that gives you this table format, which is the matrix format that I actually want. And this particular one has really limited customization. You can't um, uh, change the background color or anything. All you can do is alternative row colors. You can show row numbers, which I don't want to do. And you can do some sorting, which I don't want to do. And you can do some pagination, which I don't want to do. So basically, I just need a, uh, uh, a basically a, a spreadsheet type thing. I need columns and, uh, and uh, rows just to show off that sort of information. And then I just pull it across through there. So at the moment, I've only got three, but I think really you'd most probably may do a month out. Now, another iteration on this later on as a concept is to, instead of the front here um, having all of these images coming through and having to generate, I think we could most probably use them as an inline list. So end up with another sheet with links to each day. So all you'd actually have is on this front sheet is something like a list of dates or days so straight away you just look up so you can end up with far more um, uh, views rather than doing lots of scrolling down or anything like that you can just click on the date that you actually want and then it just takes you to that image now the images um, I just want to go back into there and just take another thing with those images just as a technical point is when you actually publish the charts we don't want to make it interactive because then it becomes an embed and embeds are a bit naughty so we want to make it an image now the image so it's basically a link and then the images update when this is update you can see that's now changed to a t and you see it's changed so in there it's a t and in there's a t and there's still that column width is still quite wide um, so if i go back to either of my glide apps um it's still T1, so it takes a little time to refresh. But um, as a workflow, the principles are all there. So I hope that's been of interest to you. I will do another video on the technical issues that I had going through and building this. I had a few buggy things that I actually had to resolve and then just how to connect to um, the codes and how they go through. So I hope that's been of interest for, for you. Thank you very much for watching. If, it's, um, if you enjoyed the video, can you give a thumbs up, please? Thank you very much indeed.